Hi, I'm Kirk Harnack with Telos Systems. I'm going to show you how to configure the Lucy Live Lite app on your smartphone or tablet so it works with your Telos Zip 1 back in the studio. We'll cover configuring the Zip 1 and your internet router as well. Get those three things configured and you can do live remote broadcast from almost anywhere. Here's how to use the Lucy Live app on your smartphone or tablet to do live remote broadcast through your mobile network and the public internet to your radio station, to the ZIP-1 at your radio station, and put it on the air. We'll show you how to configure everything and exactly how it works. It's three easy steps. Step 1, configure your Telos ZIP-1. Step 2, configure your internet router. And Step 3, configure Lucy Live Lite. Let's go to step one, configure your Telos Zip 1. First of all, we're on the telos-systems.com uh, main web page, and let's go to the Zip 1 IP codec product page. So this is the product page that describes the Zip 1. And by the way, if you haven't watched this video yet, this quick start video, let me encourage you to do so. It's on YouTube. You could just go to YouTube and search for Zip 1 Quick Start, or you can go to the Telos Systems channel on YouTube, um, or you can watch it right here from uh, this web page of the telos-systems.com website. Let's go to uh, the ZIP-1 that's here at my office. It's at an IP address of 192.168.0.68. Been to it before, so it popped up in the browser there. And here is the status page for the ZIP-1 at that address. And I'm going to go to the network settings. This is where we're going to configure the ZIP-1 to work with Lucy Live and Lucy Live Lite. Uh, for the uh, login credentials, we need to enter user as the username and no password. That's the default. So here we are in the network settings. There's a place to set up the LAN Ethernet port. There's also the WAN Ethernet port. That's the one I'm using right now with that IP address. We don't want to use DHCP. In fact, uh, if, uh, if we want to use uh, connections from the outside world from Lucy Live or other similar type software, uh, then the ZIP1 needs to be on a fixed IP address inside your network. So do not use DHCP. Now, if you take a ZIP1 out to a customer location, to a, a, um, a venue, a, a ball field, somewhere we're going to do a broadcast, you may need DHCP to get an automatic IP address assignment to the ZIP-1, but internally in your network, you need to have the ZIP-1 on a fixed IP address. All right, let's scroll all the way down to the bottom where we find the RTP push configuration. This is where we're going to configure the ZIP-1 to uh, receive calls from Lucy Live software. Um, the ZIP-1 comes configured uh, probably this way. Uh, there's a default port number here for the RTP push stream receive only port, and that's a port number of 9150. That's the default. If you send an RP team, uh, RTP stream to the ZIP-1 at that port number, it will play the stream. It will decode it and just play it. Uh, that's not quite what we're interested in. What we want is symmetric RTP, where we send a stream back to the source as well as decode the incoming stream. And so since uh, Lucy Live Lite works with G.722, that's a good, reliable, uh, not the super highest quality codec, but, you know, it works great for voice. It works uh, fine for music as long as you don't need more than 7 kilohertz of audio quality. Uh, it's great for doing quick remote broadcasts and even ball games. So that's the one we're going to use. Reply with G722 if the RTP stream is received on port 9151. Now you see that these... Um, uh, these other options here are on the next three ports after 9150. If we change this to 91 something or to some other number, uh, these would be the next three consecutive ports after that number. Anyway, what we're going to do here is enable this port, this 9151 port. So that will now be enabled. We'll click Apply. Scroll back down, make sure it took. Yes, it did. So our base port for RTP streaming is 9150, and the port that Lucy Live Lite will talk to is port 9151. And we are ready to go with that. We'll go back to the status page. And uh, by the way, uh, this particular ZIP-1 is running software version 1.6.22 beta. Uh, this is the beta version for the release software 1.7.0. So your ZIP-1, in order to have this functionality, needs to be running version 1.7.0 or later. Now that you've configured your Telos ZIP-1 to accept connections from the outside world, let's go to step two, configure your internet router. Part of configuring a ZIP-1 to receive um, calls, if you will, connections from Lucy Live Lite or other such apps from the outside world, is to configure an internet router to 
let such calls come in and forward them to the ZIP1. You know, the job of an Internet router is to keep all the bad stuff out. And uh, we have to tell it, hey, this isn't bad. This is what we want to do. Now, most routers have a web interface that you would browse into. At the moment, I happen to be using uh, an Apple Airport Extreme router, and this uses an application to go and uh, uh, deal with it. Uh, to set up a port forward, and that's what we're going to do, to set up a port forward in this router, we go to this page. You might want to uh, go to YouTube or go to an internet uh, uh, lesson to see how to set up port forwarding on whatever router that you have, or ask your IT department or IT guru to get that done for you. I'm going to add a port forward from the outside world. Now remember, uh, a few minutes ago, we set up our ZIP1 to uh, accept uh, RTP uh, calls coming in on um, port 9151. That's our symmetric RTP port. If a call comes in with G722 on port 9151, uh, we're going to create a reverse feed going right back to that source um, same way. So let's add a port. We're going to give it a description here. I'm going to just call this uh, Z1. And this is my zip one. I have several of them. So we're going to call this my zip one that's at the dot six eight address. Again, this is just a friendly name to remind me of what I'm doing here. And I'm going to give it uh, the, also the number 9151. Again, that's just the name. So I know uh, which one it is. Now, uh, in a lot of routers, you can set up UDP port forwarding. Uh, or TCP port forwarding, or both together. And in this particular router, you can set them up uh, even with separate separate ports. So I'm going to say on the public UDP port, that's going to be 9151, just like we expected. We don't have to set up a TCP port since uh, this uh, type of RTP streaming uh, is only UDP. It's not TCP. Uh, the private IP address, OK, where am I going to forward uh, these uh, port number, these port requests? I'm going to forward this. If it comes in on 9151, I'm going to forward it to 192.168.0.68. That is the IP address in my network of my ZIP1. So that's where I'm going to forward this outside request to. And I'm going to, uh, this router can do port translation as well as network address translation, but we're going to keep this the same and type 9151 for the private UDP port. So again, if a request comes in from the outside world, from the internet to my router on port 9151, then my router is going to forward that request. It's going to forward it on to uh, whatever device is here at 192.168.0.68. That's my ZIP1 that we just configured earlier. And it's going to send it on to the same port, uh, 9151, on that ZIP1. So let's click Save. And now that, that item is in there. There it is at the bottom of my list. And it's ready to go, except we need to update the router. After we update the router, that port forward will be fixed in there, and um, an outside request on port 9151 will go directly, pass through the router, and go directly to the ZIP1. Now that your internet router is configured to accept connections from the outside world, let's go to step three, configure Lucy Live Light. Here we've got an Android phone. This happens to be a Galaxy Note 2. We'll start Lucy Live Light, and I still haven't registered this version yet, so I'm using it in demo mode. And uh, the first thing we'll do here is uh, open up the settings to add a station. And I'm going to add a station. I'm going to uh, have this dial up um, one of my zip ones, which is my Nashville music demo. I'm narrating this after the fact. I realize I misspelled Nashville, but doesn't matter. It doesn't care. It's just a friendly name. Nashville Music Demo. You'd, you'd label this, you know, WXYZ Control Room or whatever. RTP is the proper protocol. Now, the server address, this is critical. You're going to put in here the public IP address of your internet connection back at your studio, wherever you're calling. Now, if that's not a static address, you can use a dynamic DNS service like I'm using. Uh, so my server address is kharnack.dyndns.org. And then you append that with a colon and the port number. Remember, we set that port number earlier at 9151. Well, we do the same thing here, 9151. The jitter buffer, 100 milliseconds is the default. Should work fine. The format, audio format, is G722. That's the only uh, selection in Lucy Live Lite. And so now we're uh, ready to make our first call. We'll kind of preset our mic level and hit the call button. And we're sending audio. And oh, look, there, we're receiving audio. The green indicator in the lower left of the top part there indicates we're receiving uninterrupted, good streaming from uh, wherever we're calling to. And you can see we're sending audio as well. The out meter is what we're sending. The in meter is what we're receiving back from the ZIP1 that we're calling. 
So um, there's instructions online on how to use this Lucy Live Light software. It's really simple. It's a connect button. Uh, when it's not connected, you can choose which preset, which station you're going to call. Oh, down in the lower right there, there's a button you can click to listen to your mic through the headphones directly. So you can hear what you're sending directly, if that's important to you. It might be. Or you can just hear what's coming back. Um, you can also adjust the headphone volume right there. And you can adjust the microphone volume right there. Whether you're using the phone's internal mic or an external mic, doesn't matter. You can set the, uh, the send level with that, uh, that slider. So we'll stop, the, uh, we'll stop and disconnect here. And um, there you go. There's your demo. Again, complete instructions are available online, or you can uh, rewind this and watch it again if it went by too fast. All right, so we've got the Zip1 at the studio configured, and we've got our Lucy Live Light software configured on our smartphone or on your tablet if you like. I've got a great 4G signal right here. Let's turn it on, and hey, we're on the air. We're broadcasting. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great time broadcasting live with your Lucy Live Light software and the Telos Zip1.